black-haired young man is seen deep in thought while looking at a blossoming tree. The tree is rarely in bloom, hence its name Jack the Unbloomed. Apparently, this young man is a new student at Kimberly Academy. He, along with other new students, is walking towards the academy. The path to the academy is inhabited by many talking flowers, known as pride plants. These flowers seem to frighten the students about their future. It appears they want to scare the newcomers. However, it is indeed true that life at Kimberly School of Magic won't be easy. The aforementioned young man meets a brown-haired girl who is also intimidated by the pride plants. There's a red-haired male student who claims that magical plants change their personalities depending on the magical particles in their soil, so it shouldn't be taken seriously. It so happens that this area has many plants with bad personalities. The brown-haired girl says she doesn't know much about that, but is knowledgeable about magical creatures. Suddenly, a blonde-haired girl scolds a short male student who is reading a book and not paying attention to his steps. The short student was about to step on a pride plant stalk, which could have led to him being scolded severely. During the new students, there is a girl whose attire is different from the others. Instead of wearing the school uniform, she dons traditional samurai clothing. The other students have never seen a samurai before. For some reason, the black-haired student can't take his eyes off the samurai girl. He feels a predestined encounter with her. Before entering the building, the academy showcases a magical creature parade for the new students. Among the displayed magical creatures is a Fafner, with its striking golden scales. The brown-haired girl looks disheartened. Even though she claimed to like magical creatures earlier, it turns out she couldn't bear to see a troll being forced to walk like the other creatures. The brown-haired girl and the red-haired boy argue whether trolls are inherently evil or not. Due to the commotion, the short student asks them to be quiet so he can continue reading his book undisturbed. Suddenly, from within the group of new students, someone quietly casts a spell. Consequently, the brown-haired girl loses control of her legs and walks towards the troll on her own. The black-haired student and the red-haired boy quickly try to stop her. The situation becomes more critical as the troll also approaches the brown-haired girl. The blonde-haired girl asks the short student what's happening, and she follows the two students. The short student is forced to stop reading his book and deal with the situation as well. When the girl is near the troll, the magic controlling her leg suddenly disappears. The troll tries to attack her, and it seems that the other students won't be able to help in time. However, the samurai girl shouts, startling the troll. She then draws her katana from its sheath. The other students feel her actions are too risky. They wanted to vert the troll's attention to themselves. Yet, when the blonde-haired girl uses a magic box, the troll doesn't even glance in their direction. The black-haired student felt that their magical powers alone were not enough to defeat the troll. Nevertheless, he had an idea to use wind magic. During his instructions, three other students compressed the strong winds and directed them upward toward the troll. Then, the black-haired student used the tibia chant, making the strong wind sound like a dragon. Although it wasn't a real dragon, the trolls were still very scared of the sound. While the troll's attention was diverted, he instructed the brown-haired girl and the samurai girl to run. However, the samurai girl charged forward toward the troll. She used the troll's body to jump into the air, and her hair suddenly turned white. The white-haired student seemed to know about this, calling it innocent color. The samurai girl then swung her katana toward the troll's head, but the blade didn't cut and only knocked the troll unconscious. Nevertheless, her hands trembled because the troll's head was too hard. She thanked the other students for their help. After that, her hair, which had turned white, returned to black. All the students are now gathered in the academy's auditorium. The black-haired student is chatting with the samurai girl. When asked, the samurai girl reveals that she didn't have a plan when facing the troll, and her katana didn't even have a sharp edge. Her actions may be unpredictable, but the black-haired student is still curious about the innocent color from the samurai. Innocent color refers to the color that appears in hair-like crystal, easily conducting magical particles, proving the strong circulation of magic within the person's body. After a while, the event begins with a speech from the headmistress. Suddenly, a woman appears on the podium with grand teleportation magic. The woman is the headmistress, 
Esmeralda. Before starting, she apologizes for the disturbance during the parade. The brown-haired girl who was involved in the incident has been treated. Esmeralda explains that the students will spend seven years there. There are two principles in this academy, freedom and results. In other words, the students are free to do anything and may die anytime. This statement is not a proverb or the like. In fact, only 80% of the students who enter Kimberly Academy manage to graduate. The remaining 20% fall into a coma due to road magic circles, get dragged and disappear because of something they summoned, or they go berserk and kill others. This incident is called devoured by the spell within the wizarding community. After explaining all of that, Esmeralda gives the new students a chance to ask questions before concluding her speech. The samurai girl immediately raises her hand. However, instead of asking, she gives a silly suggestion on how to deal with a headache, stating that the headmistress looks pained. The next event is the welcome party. At the party, the students are free to eat, drink, or chat. Esmeralda then snaps her fingers, causing the new students to float and suddenly appear in the party room. There, the seniors are ready to welcome the newcomers. The students involved in the troll incident gather to chat, while the brown-haired girl is taken to the school clinic, UKS. As soon as she is mentioned, she suddenly appears from above. With her arrival, everyone is now present. They begin to introduce themselves. The blonde-haired girl is Michaela McFarland, the eldest daughter of the noble McFarland family. Next is the brown-haired girl, Katie Alto, a student from Farland in the Northern Union. Following her is the red-haired boy, Guy Greenwood, the son of a magical plant farmer with a long history. Then, there's the short student, Pete Reston, whose parents are non-magicians, and he doesn't have any family history. He got in through the quota for ordinary humans. He seems uninterested in being close to others and just reads his book. However, the black-haired student keeps staring at Pete. He has also read that book. Pete suddenly becomes excited that someone shares the same hobby. Either way, the black-haired student is all of her horn. His family comes from two generations of wizarding families. His male and female cousins are seniors at Kimberly. Finally, there's the samurai girl, Hibia Nano. She was born into a samurai family, Turakwizian, from the Yamatsu state. She got into this academy due to a unique connection. Half a year ago, Nano was aided by a passing wizard when she was on the verge of collapse during a fight. She remembers the wizard's name was McFarland. Michaela suspects that wizard might be her father. Coincidentally, her father is an unofficial instructor at Kimberly. After the introductions, they proceed with the feast. Nano takes one plate of meat intended for six people. She can't believe that's meant for six people and is confident she can finish it alone. It seems she still doesn't understand the dining etiquette in this country. Michaela offers to teach her the proper manners. Meanwhile, Oliver pretends to play the role of a waiter serving food. After the new students enjoy the party, they head to their respective dorm rooms. Coincidentally, Oliver shares a room with Pete. When Pete finds out, he still acts aloof and doesn't want to be disturbed while reading his book. Now it's almost sunrise and Oliver is awake. He notices that the clock in his room is moving in a strange way. It turns out there's a clock spirit that appeared there, making him uncertain of the time. Oliver decides to leave the dormitory building. He senses a thick concentration of magical particles in that area. While walking, he hears someone calling his name. The person identifies themselves as Gwen's spy, Oliver's cousin. They were sent to monitor Oliver until he gets used to the academy. Since they will be meeting frequently, Oliver wants to know their real name. The spy reveals their name to be Teresa Kirst. For now, Teresa still does not show their face. After continuing to walk, Oliver arrives at a fountain. However, he didn't expect to see Nino bathing there. He is slightly surprised to see Nino's body covered in scars. He then casts a spell to block the view from outside. While gazing at her half-naked body, Oliver is reminded of a similar sight of a blonde-haired woman who called him Noel.